If you're having trouble finding your server on the online list of browse community servers or people can't connect to your server's IP from anywhere other than your LAN address or just in general, uh, these are just some of the steps you really need to take to make sure you get it working properly. So I'm assuming everyone in this video has their server um, at least installed properly and understands how to actually run the server itself. So if you haven't gotten there yet, um, all you need to do is all this information is online about it. You can find out how to run uh, Steam CMD in your CSGO fo uh, uh, folder. And there's thorough guides from top to bottom. So like csgogamebanana.com. Okay, anyways, I'll get straight to the point. Um, if your server is not showing up online, uh, you, you're having issues with some, some kind of forwarding. So basically, your home computer needs to connect to your router, and then that router connects to your internet service provider. And all of this has to go completely smoothly so that the end user, the person that is you know, in a different IP address, can connect directly to your computer. So just bear with me because this is a little complicated and this is why not everyone can set up a server. So my first thing to point out is every network is going to be unique. It's going to be tailored to you know whatever setup you have at your house. So if you're going through multiple routers, that could be a problem right there. You're going to want to connect to the router that's closest to connecting to your service provider. For example, I have a Linksys router, which is this one pulled up right here. This is a 192.168.1.1 address. This router is connected to my modem, and my modem is actually also a router, which is technically called a gateway. So this is a router and a modem built in one. This is the one that the cable company gave me, but I've also plugged in my own router. So this is extremely important. So basically what I did is I plugged my laptop, which runs the server, directly into the modem slash router, the gateway. If I had plugged it into the second router in sequence, it may not have worked at all. So from there, what I did is I had to set up a static IP. So your router will connect to your computer and it will assign it its own IP when it connects. So what you have to do when you're running a server is you have to have a static IP, meaning it's not changing. You have to tell it what to assign. So there's plenty of guides on setting up a static IP address, but I'll go ahead and walk you guys through it. Basically what you have to do is you go here and you, you get here by going to Open Network and Sharing Center, change adapter settings, and then go to your properties. See, CSGO uses Internet Protocol version 4, so this is the only one we're worried about. You go to properties, and see, it tells you right here, obtain IP address automatically. You want to click this one. This is how you tell it to assign a static IP. Same with this one right here. You don't want it to obtain this automatically. So the way that you get this critical info here is you can get it yourself. You go to your command prompt, and just if this is something you're uncomfortable with, command prompts something you're going to have to get used to for running a server. You go here, you type ipconfig slash all, and as a, you know, just a reminder, this is the Windows control command prompt that we're in right now. This is not your server's command prompt. And here it shows you all of this information, all of your addresses. Um, what you do is you get this information, and I'm plugged in. This, this computer is not my laptop, so I'm plugged into the 192.168.1.1. Um, but if I was plugged into the router, or if I was, if I was on my laptop making this video, this would be 10.0.0.1. And the, the where I got that from is the 10.0.0.1. This is the closest router to my internet connection. The router I'm looking at right now is this one because I'm on my desktop computer. Don't let this confuse you. So all you do is you, you follow a guide, you'll get that info, and you put it here. You put it right here. You put the IP address that you want yours to be static. So in the case of my laptop, it's 10.0.0.3. Uh, this one is 
and then my default gateway, which um, normally would show up right here instead of 192.168.1.1. That would be the same as this gateway. So it's 10, 0, 0, 1. This one's asking you, you know, about your, what your router is. And then your DNS preferred, that's also on here. That'll be this right here, exactly like this. This one is consistent for both. So it'd be 75, 75, 75, 75, 75, 76, 76. Straight from here. And then you would click OK. This is the exact settings on my laptop, just so you guys can see. I don't want to set a static IP for this computer, though. So that's all you got to do there. And you can get all that info from here. If you're having a hard time finding it, you can call your internet service provider. Or if you use, say, Comcast, you can look up what the default Comcast um, address is for connecting to their modem. OK, once you have all of that right, and that is a 100% crucial step, uh, you have to set your static IP to port forward. To connect, for people to be able to connect to your computer, they have to be able to connect through the ports that Counter-Strike uses. And you have to tell it individually which ones to port forward. Uh, there's a great website for this. It's portforwarding.com. Or, I'm sorry, portforward.com. You can find any kind of um, port forwarding you need. So you can find your specific router for specifically CSGO, like Xfinity router, CSGO. See port forwarding. There's all different kinds of these. I'll tell you exactly what to do. Okay, so in my video, I'm just trying to explain to you, you know, what you need to understand. This may be complete. You you might not use an Xfinity router, so you're gonna have to figure out how to set up the static IP. You're gonna have to figure out how to put port forwarding in here. So I I put these one at a time. I manually added every single one of these. I left IPv6 blank because that's not what we're using. I filled out IPv4 with my IP. I put the ports in and I give it a random name. So let's go one through four. Okay, so then once all of those ports were forwarded, I then made sure that my firewall for this um, was all, all that was set up right. Um, I believe I turned my firewall security down. And then this, this is another important thing you have to, if you're, modem does uh, universal plug and play you also have to turn that off so um, that basically is just a feature that whenever you plug something in to your internet it like figures out you know what to do with it um, but that has to be disabled okay another important piece of advice I'm just giving you guys a long checklist because there are so many things that could go wrong um, make sure that you are not connected to Steam on your account that you're using to connect your server with. You can play on your server and you can join it, but if you want people on the internet to be able to see your CSGO server, you have to be completely logged off Steam when you host it. And if you aren't, when you host your CSGO server, it will see that you're on, and it'll see you in your local network, and it'll make that server as a LAN network. So you need to make sure that you are completely offline and you need to make sure somebody connects to it before you do that and you can of course host it and tell a friend to connect or you can host it and wait for somebody to connect but if you join your own server before somebody does it'll turn it into a LAN server um, other than that th that's pretty much the gist of the whole thing um, most of these issues with getting a CSGO server to show up online are completely because some sort of issue with port forwarding. It could also be your Windows firewall. Um, you may need to allow ports through your Windows firewall. This is another step I took. So your computer itself might be blocking um, CSGO from letting people connect publicly. So you need to um, go to your advanced settings in your Windows firewall and then for inbound rules and outbound rules uh, there's guides to this as well there's guides to everything I'm telling you guys I'll, I'll put some of the links uh, Windows firewall with advanced security 
you just write a new rule and you tell it which port you want to let through and uh, you just fill it in. Uh, CS should be UDP ports. You can add them for both though. Uh, some of, sometimes a TCP port is important for if somebody else wants to use your console. And uh, you just put your port in there and you give it a name. And also I would make sure if I were you guys, um, add to this list, add the programs, add your uh, Steam app program and your CSGO. Um, what is it? S -R -S -S -C or something like that, whatever program it is that actually is a server itself. And also add those to your outbound, including the ports. So this way your Windows firewall will let all the ports through, your router will let all the ports through, and um, if, if your modem is not a router, you're going to have slightly different procedures here. You're going to have to go through your router to the modem. You need to make sure your modem is port forwarded, assuming it even has an option to do that. Not all routers will ha or not all modems will have the option to even do any kind of port forwarding. If that's the case, you'll have to do all your port forwarding through your router. And notice how these addresses are completely different. This is because this is my modem router, and this is because this is a separate wireless router that's connected to that modem router. But if this was just a modem, and this was the router I used, I would go to applications and gaming, and I would allow all these ports through. And you can see I've done that. This was this didn't help me at all, but this is what I was doing when I was trying to figure out how to run my server through both routers at the t same time, and obviously that didn't work out for me. I just kind of left these on here, and you know it doesn't even matter at this point. I got some open ports on my computer, but my computer's secure, so it doesn't matter. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, so just just to recap, make sure you're offline when somebody off offline of your Steam when somebody tries to connect to your server. Otherwise, it definitely won't show up in the internet list. Um, a good tip for having somebody find your server is get them to go in their favorites and get them to add your IP and search for games from this location. Um, make sure to port forward everything and you can find the ports that CSGO has. They're all right here. These are all the ports that I found that you would need. And make sure you turn off universal plug and play. Uh, think about how your network is set up if you're going straight into the modem or straight into the router. Uh, make sure your Windows firewall is off, and uh, simply just make sure your server is installed right. For me, the installing the server took probably an hour, and then figuring out the ports took six. And, but, you know, in seven hours I got a dedicated server set up, so that's not that bad considering I don't have any background in IT other than just the hobbies. Uh, and in and, and these guides, of course, just... You know, some of y'all, you might get a little confused with, with setting up a server. You do have to do some weird stuff like make a, a file, a bat file. You have to figure out how to change a text document to a bat file. Um, there's an option for that in Windows to like view and edit the, the extensions of files. And then you have to make this code in it. And then when you click on it, it'll run your server properly. Um, some of these settings may cause you trouble. Like this right here, this was a total disaster for me. Um, keep this line of code out altogether. You can find a whole bunch of different kinds of batch files, examples online, in all these demonstrations. They all have different kinds of batch files. That one doesn't. But it, there's, there's a bunch of examples of how to do this. Um, another useful tidbit, there's also a graphical user interface for... Uh, the CSGO dedicated server you can use, but I just, I, I use the traditional route just because these guides were working for me. Um, all the guides to setting up the server, they're pretty straightforward. If you guys got questions about that though, you know, post it in the comments. I'll give you a super thorough walkthrough on how to actually set up the server itself. And I'll, I'll just show you guys literally every step I took. But, you know, I, I feel like in this, in the gaming community, nobody really, 
has taken the time to sit down and just be like, this is how to get your CS Go server online. Um, I think there's a million guides out there to setting up the server itself in terms of the program, but to actually set up a server on a personal computer in your house that's just an extra computer and you want to run a CS server from your IP that anyone on the internet can connect to, that's where it really gets difficult. And I think the reason there's no cookie cutter guide to it is because, you know, nobody's really sat down and made a guide like this where it's like, you have to understand with running a server, so much of it is the forwarding and the firewalls. So if you can just, you know, think about your network and think about, am I plugged right into the wall with my router? that's plugged into my computer? Am I going through wireless? Should I even try to go through wireless? That'll complicate things. You know, should I set up a static IP? Yes, you should. Um, that way you can narrow down any problems you're having. If you're having trouble setting up the static IP, don't worry about it too much. Just keep cracking at it. It took me about an hour to figure out how to actually set the thing up. And, you know, as far as for forwarding ports go, just take take a stab at everything you think it could be. If you need to turn your wire Windows firewall completely off for 20 minutes while you test it, chances are you're not going to get a virus unless you already had one on your computer. So, you know, make sure you get this set up right and understand. Let me let me put the settings in here one more time for you guys. Just so you can see. This this is completely critical. I tried this about 15 times before I got it to work on my IP, but once I got it working properly, it's it's permanently good to go. So I don't ever have to mess with this again. And now I know how to do it for future reference. So I looked all of this up in CMD IP config slash all. All the information should be here. DNS server, DNS server, uh, default gateway, default gateway. See these are all subject to change. This is this is from my desktop once again, one nine two one six eight one one. If I did the same command on my on my laptop, this default gateway would say 10.0.0.1, and I would just stick it right there. And same thing, uh, sub, default subnet mask, that is also in here. There it is, subnet mask. And um, the IP address, this isn't in there. This is what you want it to be. So I just randomly assigned it. Um, I could have put a 4 here or a 5. This is it just as long as it doesn't overlap with anything else. There's no way for, I don't know how to check that, so I just put it as three. No problem so far. I've been working fine off my server for the past week, and people can still connect to it. Uh, let me make sure that didn't save. That'll screw everything up on this desktop. All right. Um, all right, and uh, anything else, just uh, post in comments, and... Hopefully you guys can use some of these websites I showed you. I'll put some links in, in the bottom, and uh, good luck.